All right, so there is a lot of confusion about Destiny's 10-year plan. The common belief right now is that Bungie intended for Destiny 1 to last 10 years, but this is actually a widespread misunderstanding. I myself have been misinformed about the matter for a while now, so I decided to revisit Destiny's development timeline to get a full understanding of what the 10-year plan actually entails. Here's what I learned. Back in October 1st, 2007, Bungie announced that they were splitting off from their parent company, Microsoft, to become a private independent studio. Microsoft would retain the rights to the Halo intellectual property and a minority stake in Bungie and still leave the door open for future partnerships, while Bungie's newfound independence would allow them to pursue other ventures outside of Microsoft. Following the announcement, Bungie worked on two more Halo titles with Microsoft, Halo 3 ODST and Halo Reach, before finally moving on to what they hope to be greener pastures. This finally brings us to 2010, the year that Bungie began development on Destiny, or as it was known back then, Project Tiger. 2010 also marked the birth of Bungie's 10-year plan for this new video game IP and universe. On April 29th, 2010, Bungie announced a 10-year publishing agreement with Activision Blizzard. The agreement dictated that Bungie would retain ownership of their studio and their new IP, while Activision would gain exclusive publishing rights to the new IP for a decade. So once the contract is up in 10 years, Bungie could decide to take Destiny to another publisher, since they are still an independent studio and since they still own the Destiny IP. But until 10 years are up, only Activision can publish Destiny games. Thus, with a 10-year publishing agreement signed, the wheels were set in motion for what would eventually become the Destiny franchise. From there, a little over two years after the signing of the agreement, on May 2012, details of the contract emerged as part of a lawsuit involving Infinity Ward and the Call of Duty franchise. The full contract actually became available online, and the pertinent section stated the following. The release plan for the Destiny games is currently comprised of four major retail Destiny game releases tentatively scheduled for the fall of 2013, 2015, 2017, and 2019, and four Comet releases following each Destiny game release tentatively scheduled for the fall of 2014, 2016, 2018, and 2020. In addition, as part of the Destiny games, licensors shall also produce DLC releases as mutually agreed by the parties in the time periods between retail Destiny games and Comet releases. And therein lies the full outline of Destiny's 10-year plan. Four games, four expansions, and some DLC sprinkled in here and there over the course of a decade. So no, ladies and gentlemen, Destiny 1 by itself was never intended to last 10 years. Rather, the 10-year plan applies to the entire Destiny franchise, and Destiny 2 is part of that 10-year plan. Now, what I'm most curious about is how the confusion behind the 10-year plan began. Why did so many people get the notion that Destiny 1 was intended to be a 10-year-long venture? Well, from what I gathered, the miscommunication and misunderstanding can be traced as far back as Destiny 1's announcement back in February 2013. Among the promotional materials that they released for the game was a vid doc, which featured two small segments emphasizing that Destiny would be a 10-year-long journey, but with no clear indication that the journey would span over a series of games. We needed something that challenges and inspires all of us. Something that I think has enough ideas in it that'll last us for the next 10 years. They basically threw in the words 10 year in vague terms during Destiny 1's announcement, and that's where I believe the misunderstanding began. I know that some will argue that the leaked contract from 2012 outlined the 10 year plan pretty clearly. But do keep in mind that aside from Bungie fans and gaming enthusiasts, most people probably never even looked into that. Why would they? At the time, Destiny was an unknown entity, something nobody really cared about. It's only once Bungie announced Destiny that the game came into the limelight, and by then, only a niche group of people had looked into the details about the contract. So when Destiny's 10-year journey was vaguely communicated during the game's announcement, most simply assumed 
that the 10-year plan applied to that one game. Further adding to the confusion was Destiny's MMO elements, which led many to assume that Destiny 1 would be treated like an MMO, which are commonly known to span for many years before a full sequel. As an example, World of Warcraft is almost 13 years old, and it's still going strong, even if the player base is slowly dwindling. It also took seven years between Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2, and eight years between Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV, 11 years for Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. So that's kind of what people had in mind when Destiny, this MMO-style shared world shooter, was being touted as a 10-year-long journey. Long story short, I believe that Bungie did a poor job in concisely conveying the details of the 10-year plan, especially during a time when all eyes were on them during the game's announcement. Their vagueness on the matter ended up costing them dearly, causing a big misunderstanding that still lives on today. I know, I know, the contract has all the details, but... Think about this, the only reason that we even know about the four games, four expansions roadmap throughout 10 years was because of a really well-timed lawsuit against Activision. All that information in the contract was never supposed to be made public in the first place. Think about it, had that lawsuit never happened and had the contract never been released for public eyes, we would all be in the dark about what exactly this 10-year plan entails. Most of us would have probably assumed that what Bungie said in the vid doc about a 10-year journey pertains to just the one game. Especially since even after Destiny 1's announcement and even after the game's launch, Bungie has yet to clearly communicate on an official capacity what the 10-year plan actually means for the series. Bungie has yet to flat out say to us we're making four games and four expansions throughout the span of 10 years. All they've really said is we have a 10-year plan for Destiny, whatever that means. So of course there would be some misunderstanding and confusion. Fortunately, we do live in the timeline in which the lawsuit happened and the leaked documents are out there to make some much needed clarifications. But it's scary to think how misconstrued this 10-year plan would have been had the documents not leaked, had the lawsuit not happened. It's a bit of a blessing in disguise, really. Now, another major contributor to this widespread misunderstanding were the various articles that followed Destiny 1's announcement and how they also used the term 10-year plan in vague terms or in ways that could have easily been misconstrued as one game for 10 years. Check out this quote from an article by Wired. While many games make the same promise, Destiny's vision of an extended period of time isn't 100 hours, it's more like 10 years. Here's a statement that Bungie gave to Website & Gadget. Our engine is fully multi-threaded for performance on all platforms, both today and for the next 10 years. Here's a quote from Slashgear. Bungie has revealed that Destiny will be released as 10 books over the course of 10 years. Each book will have its own beginning, middle, and end. Here's a quote from Eurogamer. Bungie promises the game will encourage players to group up and to set out on activities for hundreds of hours over years of time in some seamless, unobtrusive way. Here's one from Polygon. Players will grow and customize their characters with new armor, clothing, weapons, vehicles, and spacecraft. Items that players will acquire and equip. Objects that flesh out the lore of Destiny's 10-year narrative arc. Here's another one from Wired. To create a next-gen console game with a team of hundreds of developers that has a lifespan of a decade, which seamlessly blends always-on multiplayer gaming within a deep, lore-ridden universe. Finally, here's a statement that Bungie provided to website GameSpot. Given the different ways of playing Destiny and given the fact that the game is completely dynamic and will be different every time you experience it with other people, the amount of time that will be relevant to the gamers who decide to play it is something that we think will be a very long life cycle. Do you see what I mean? I get that if you are aware of the leaked documents and its contents, then you can kind of make sense of what they're saying. But those who never saw the contents of the leaked contract or heard about the four games, four expansions over 10 years plan, information that was never meant to be public, by the way, it is easy to see how those people could have easily misconstrued the 10-year plan as one game lasting 10 years. You can see how people who only started following Destiny after the game's announcement were like, oh, so it's gonna be like World of Warcraft. It's gonna span many years with a bunch of major expansions and patches to keep the game evolving over a decade. So yeah, I would say that this misunderstanding can easily be traced as far back as the 
game's announcement. But hey, if you're watching this video and were as misinformed as I was, at least you now know the truth. So okay, fine, we clear the air, the 10 year plan will span across four major games and four major expansions. It's all good, right? Well, the biggest culprit of this 10 year plan isn't even the misunderstanding, it's the fact that it's not been executed very well. Let's start with the fact that Bungie has already faced a ton of development troubles behind the scenes and are way behind schedule. The contract outlines that the schedule should look something like this, but what we're actually looking at now is more like this. Troubles began as far back as Destiny 1, which was delayed from its initial September 2013 window to September 2014 due to a full story reboot halfway through development, all of which was detailed in a really great article by website Kotaku and editor Jason Schreer. So yeah, by the time Destiny 1 launched, they were already one year behind with their 10 year plan. From there, Bungie released two small DLC, The Dark Below and House of Wolves on December 2014 and May 2015 respectively, before the first major Comet DLC, The Taken King, which launched on September 15th, 2015, around the time that Destiny 2 should have launched as per the contract. But with the schedule having been pushed by a full year, Destiny 2 was now slated for a September 2016 release, until Destiny 2's two-year development cycle was extended to three, much like Destiny 1, which is why they created an initially unplanned DLC, Rise of Iron, to take its place. So now Destiny 2 is slated for a September 6th, 2017 release, According to the contract though, by fall 2017, Destiny 3 should have launched. So my point is that the numerous delays and the troubled development history doesn't necessarily exude confidence in an already struggling 10 year plan. If you ask me, I think it's clear that Bungie is being stretched way too thin by committing to a constant stream of sequels and large expansions. With so much work to do and so little time, it is no wonder that they have to resort to sort of half-step sequels. This kind of reminds me of how the Call of Duty franchise is being scheduled, which calls for a yearly release by having two separate studios releasing one Call of Duty game on a bi-yearly basis. And the result is that a lot of these sequels feel too familiar and like they make very little progress, culminating in fatigue for the series. Same thing happened with Assassin's Creed, a yearly schedule split between two studios who had to churn out a new Assassin's Creed on a bi-yearly basis. That's sort of what two to three years grants you, a sort of half step of a sequel rather than a full on next step, next evolution for the series. At least if you're doing AAA video game development where everything's just really expensive and takes a ton of time. So yeah, after seeing how familiar Destiny 2 looks, plays and feels from the beta at least, and with two more games on the horizon on such a tight schedule, it makes me wonder just how much progress the series can make from Destiny 2 to Destiny 3 and from Destiny 3 to Destiny 4, especially if they're only going to be two to three years apart. And this is one studio that has to do all this. It's Bungie cranking out sequels, large expansions and small DLCs. Now this would all be a lot easier to overlook if Destiny's 10 year plan actually delivered on the promise of a seamless ever evolving journey or whatever, but unfortunately that's not the case. One of the biggest bummers for Destiny 1 veterans is that their progress will not carry over to Destiny 2. This by the way is despite the fact that Bungie told website IGN three months after Destiny 1 launched that quote, your progress will 100% carry over to the sequel. Fast forward to March 3rd, 2017, and here's how Bungie addressed the issue. Sequels represent the start of a new adventure for every player, with new worlds to explore, new stories to tell, new powers to acquire, new loot to earn, and much more. This led us to a decision that would enable us to serve both the game and the player's best interests. Destiny 1 power, possessions, and Eververse related items and currency will not carry forward. They will, however, remain accessible to you in Destiny 1. We know that just like us, you have grown fond of guardians you've created, so we do plan to preserve your character personalization. We are going to recognize the dedication and passion you have shown for this world, specifically the class, race, gender, face, hair, and marking selections for all characters that have achieved level 20 and completed the Black Garden story mission will carry forward. 
We also plan to award those veteran accounts with honors that reflect your Destiny 1 accomplishments. So basically, you can keep the character creator stuff that you maybe spent a couple dozen minutes in, but all your hard-earned rewards that you spent dozens to hundreds of hours for won't. Understandably, a lot of Destiny 1 veterans were not happy about this, especially after Bungie explicitly said that progress would 100% carry over to the sequel. It's also a decision that goes against the idea of a continuous 10-year plan, as it marks a clear demarcation between the first and second game rather than a fluid transition. It basically makes Destiny 2 like any other video game sequel rather than an extension to a constantly evolving universe spanning across 10 years or whatever they promised. So yeah, player progress not carrying over is definitely a damn shame. Finally, for the nail in the coffin for this 10-year plan, Turns out there might not be a 10-year plan. Talking to video game magazine Edge on September 2015, when asked about Destiny's 10-year plan, Bungie's Eric Osborne gave the following statement. A 10-year plan? It's a 10-year partnership agreement. It has nothing to do with the development of the game proper. To think that somehow, before Destiny had shipped, we had some 10-year plan written down somewhere? It's comical. Apparently, Eric forgot that a big part of the initial appeal of Destiny, the big thing that they advertised, was, quote, the ultimate adventure that unfolds over 10 years. So, yeah, to come out with this type of response all of a sudden, dismissing the idea of a 10-year journey as a key aspect of the series, is questionable, to say the least. But... There you go, everything I could find about Destiny's 10-year plan. The most important thing to note is that the 10-year plan is not for one game, it's a 10-year plan for a whole franchise spanning across four games, four expansions, and a bunch of various smaller DLC. This is all at least according to the leaked contract from back in 2012. On a more technical level, it is also a 10-year agreement between Bungie and Activision Blizzard. Whether this 10-year plan will live up to what was originally advertised by Bungie, only time will tell, but it is off to a rocky start. And if Bungie's Eric Osborne is to be believed, there may not be a 10-year plan, or they are just making this up as they go. Hard to say, honestly, with what little Bungie has officially communicated on the matter. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful, and if you enjoy my content, I hope you'll consider supporting us on Patreon to help our community remain independent from third-party sponsorship and corporate interference. And to be further updated on all things video game news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out!